So I'm very happy to have uh, over here uh, the director, filmmaker, producer, writer, actress, and many more, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Christina Marca, Marca yeah. uh, with the movie T Stories. Um, so congratulations for the achievement, you know. Um, creating a feature without zero budget. <laughs> is a very difficult task. I know it personally for my first feature too. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. um, especially a film to so complex, emotionally and technically. Okay. Um, that is a lot of uh, very impressive uh, scenes in it. Thank you. And uh, what was most surprised for me that you have a lot of one shots. I love continuous shots. I love continuous shots. And um, a huge inspiration for me has been this Berliner movie called uh, Victoria, yes. which was entirely done in, in one shot. But I mean, I've always been the biggest fan of one shots. And for example, Billie Eilish just uh, published her new music video. And I was like, yes, <laughs> which is a one shot, you know? And I've always been a big, big fan of this. And I considered it to be a great, tool to tell a slice of life story, which um, is like a kind of genre that not many people know, but it's supposed to be without three acts and just like a really voyeuristic look, a glimpse into um, the life of the protagonists of the characters. So yeah, I, <laughs> but first of all, I like the continuous shots a lot anyways. And then second, because of their voyeuristic nature. And then second, like, yeah, it really fitted into the slice of life kind of nature. Yeah. And I'm really happy that you like it actually. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's uh, something that I love too, but I was surprised to see how many you're doing it and uh, how much there are really complex one shot. That, uh, <laughs> and that, that are, you know, it's, it's not in one uh, in it's not in one location. They are in few location, and yeah, <laughs> you know, and you're trying to catch a story and emotions, and it, it's not, it's a it's a daring uh, a thing to do when uh, you are uh, in your early stages as a, as a filmmaker and without any budget. So <laughs> thank you. So, yeah, always like a congratulations challenge. Congratulations for this achievement because they are very, you. they are catching the emotions very, very strongly. So thank you. I really hope it worked. <laughs> yeah, um, I think so. I, I don't care what other people think, you know. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> well, I care what you think. So that's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> um, are all the stories in the film uh, made uh, up of your life experience or? Oh, uh, yeah. Elia, Elia love uh, experience. Did you see it and talk about it? And, well, uh, and um, when you decided which stories will be in the movie, and um, it's based on your stories? Yeah, like it's very, very personal, this movie to me. Like, um, Obviously, it's not 100% um, my stories or whatever. I adapted it for for the for the medium, but um, it's very very personal, and a lot of things have kind of happened to me in a very similar way. Which um, what was interesting about the third chapter, Trans Mare. Um, so maybe I, I just give you a little overview about the chapters and how I see them or the topic I consider the movie to be because. Um, I think um, for me, the movie represents uh, or, or like the topic of the movie is transphobia. And uh, as the movie progresses through the chapters, which are unchronologically, like um, there are, um, it goes from subtle transphobia to more severe cases of transphobia. So first it's like subtle transphobia and t dating, then let's like a little more severe case in genuine and where people might still not be really sure if some people might actually say it's not transphobic but in the third chapter it's like the hard cases of transphobia and the two first chapters they literally like just uh, experiences from my life that I adapted for the movie 
And the third chapter, it's something that actually um, I wanted another protagonist and um, I kind of wrote it for Alia, which I got to know at some point and she's a DJ in, in Berlin and I really admired her and she's so powerful and talented. So I wrote, wrote it for her and really wanted her inside this movie. Um, which was interesting is that um, like a lot of what happened in this movie later happened to me in, in some way at least. And, um, but it was like kind of a pr prophecy, the movie, because it happened after I shot the movie. So in some way it oh. also prepared me for what was about to happen and allowed me to like handle it in a better way <laughs> <laughs> then okay. it was yeah <laughs> yeah one of my um late my, one of my questions that i prefer to the end it's about transphobia so i'm yeah. moving i i will ask them now <laughs> um yeah. the first story you know it's you meeting your friends you know and even your your best friend that she she you discovering that she is initially have a lot of prejudice and she's a little bit, she's transphobic even, you know, yeah. she she's ruining you the date, you know, <laughs> is it happen? Like really friends, the two people you thought they are good friends of you did something like this? Yeah, like it did. Like actually um, when I grew up, I grew up in a village in Germany and I had a lot of friends, but before, and I was wearing like um, kind of mask um, in front of them, but at some point when I just couldn't take it anymore, I started, I went for the transition and at this point um, I went to Thailand to do it there and I had like a clean cut. So at this point um, when I went to Thailand and did the transition, I was um, interiorly, I was fine. I had to be okay with potentially losing everybody, like literally everybody in my life. Uh, luckily, I didn't lose everybody, like um, my family um, at some point handled it great and everything. Um, but um, I'm, I lost most of my friends when I came back and it, and this is some experience that I kind of like um, through the movie kind of like um, channeled into into art, you know, and this thing is something that yeah, it's literally happened to me. I had a friend. Um, which I'm not going to name, but at some point she was kind of jealous and I, I just noticed that or realized that behind my back she was telling somebody that I didn't know and that was starting to like get flirty with me that like, hey, she's trans by the way. So um, <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I don't really know why, but my, I, I guess it might be jealousy or whatever. I, I don't even know, but yeah, this really happened. And I did really lose like actually basically all of my friends, maybe like two of them stayed or three. But yeah, I don't have contact to any of them anymore. But it's something that I was cool with even before going into transition. And the good thing is that now I have people that appreciate me for who I really am. And that's far more important. Like before transitioning, I was I was thinking that um, I was struggling with this and I was really thinking of how can I take all of these people that I consider to be really close friends and even family, how can I take them with me into this new life or into my real self, you know? But yeah, <laughs> um, just had to yeah. make peace with the fact that it's not always the case and that um, I have to lose the resistance, you know, <laughs> in order to be myself. Yeah, I think um, the people that stay with you really appreciate you and love you as you are and not your body, you know, they love your emotions yeah. and your feelings and you as a human being, not... I like to think so. <laughs> yeah. so. so maybe it's the, the it, not the easiest way to discover who is the best friend or... Yeah. And, and maybe other other people can learn from me that this is not not their decision to tell who you are and what you are. You know, it's yeah. your decision. Yeah. Yeah, and some yeah. people struggled with it, and some people it also took a long time. And after like a year or something, they came back to me and they were like, "I'm sorry. Now I realize that you are who you are, and you're happy now." So um, 
I also had this this happening at some point. Nice. Nice. And I want to ask, because Berlin in the movie looks so transphobic city. <laughs> Is it really such a, it's such a transphobic city? Well, I would say that transphobia is a really real thing in every city. Luckily, um, actually, I've got to realize that Berlin and, for example, also Tel Aviv are two of the le least transphobic cities that I have come to know. And if we're talking about Berlin, especially certain areas of Berlin, like Kreuzberg. In Kreuzberg, this is East Berlin. This is like what is the most liberal place of Berlin nowadays. And I really feel like I can be myself there without fear of getting subtle cases of transphobia. Like luckily the really heavy cases of transphobia, they're gonna be very rare in Berlin actually for, for me at least, who has some sort of I, I guess it's a good passing. I mean, I don't want to like say that it's true or not, but like, I guess, I hope, I don't know. Um, but I also know many friends of mine who also have a lot of um, situations happening to them. And even I sometimes really get situations where I'm being asked, and this is often not in, in mean, in, a mean intention, but um, it's, it's not okay. I, I, I believe it's not okay when random people just ask you like, are you a man or a woman? Um, and this is something that happens quite a lot to trans women, I would say, if they're not, if they don't have like 100% passing, which I guess I don't actually, um, due to the fact that I get this question. But like, um, yeah, I mean, transphobia is a very real thing, but in Berlin is actually lower than it would be in other places. So, it's kind of scary nowadays because I consider that like if I go 100 kilometers to the east, I'm in Poland and they're supposed to have LGBT free zones, which I don't even really understand what it means. But um, but uh, so there's a lot of places where I don't feel safe to go um, just because of who I am, you know, it's like it has been America, actually, and maybe now it's getting better after the elections because Trump was really heavily going against trans, uh, against, um, trans rights um, and systematically even, um, which I think many people didn't realize or don't even talk about it that much, but some people do. Um, it is Brazil, it is Poland, it is Russia, it is like huge parts of the Middle East um, and yeah, it's just very unfortunate, um, but I don't really feel safe to go to many places in this on this planet nowadays, at least, and I hope it's getting better. And this is what I'm trying to fight for. So ultimately, this movie is just me trying to make people empathize, basically. And I believe that through size of life, I can make them um, just uh, experience certain kind of situations, especially talking about subtle transphobia, which is like I, I think it's so important to talk about subtle racism, subtle transphobia, subtle homophobia subtle misogyny all these subtle cases of hate rather than like the really really extreme cases um because it's much more like spread and much more yeah <laughs> yeah 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 people sometimes you know in in uh, they even don't understand they are they are um saying or doing something transphobic or homophobic yeah. because it's, it's on the border. Yeah, and this is what I say, like um, many in many cases, like what I said is what I said is like, if people ask you, are you a man or a woman? It's not even necessarily in bad intention. It's not, the intention is not, I'm gonna be an asshole now. Sometimes it's genuine interest, but um, it's still not an okay and a question to ask and what I always ask myself or what I ask them then is like I, I don't I answer with a contra question and I ask like what do I look like you know do I look like I'm trying to be a man here or like you know so um yeah I think no matter what kind of like transphobic questions you get or homophobic questions it's always good to answer with a contra question actually and that's like an advice I could give people if anybody's watching. 
A year ago, we presented your short film, Genuine. Yeah. Uh, which is part of T Stories. Yeah. Uh, you're not a girl. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we are presenting and uh, that. Um, was it created before the rest of the movie? Or um, you, what you did over there? Can you tell, uh, uh, tell how you built the story? Like yeah. Jinyan was before or you shot after? Uh, you... So basically I shot tea, story, uh, tea dating first. And then I started production on Transmare, which took quite a while. I was shooting on this one for a long time because it's like, um, uh, it was like the most uh, difficult in terms of like um, what I need to have for this and how I can manage this without the budget. But in the middle of actually producing Transmare, the story of Genuine actually happened to me where I was trying to move into an apartment with my then girlfriend and, um, and we, were allowed to um, move in and it, the landlord said that she's a lesbian and she would only allow lesbians or she would prefer lesbians and we said okay fine because we are and then I moved in there and um, and I was being comfortable I was just being um, comfortable after moving in and we were enjoying some LPs whatever you know and I just started talking with my girlfriend whatever comfortable you know um, so at in the next morning she told her like I heard her voice and she sounds like a man so you lied to me um you're living with a man and she was like referring to me as like he and um so she was telling me we have to move out again and it really wow. hit us both really intensely and I didn't really know what to do so I actually I got myself a, an apartment in like in an area which I consider to be like the most transphobic area in Berlin. At first I wrote the script. I just needed, I, I, sometimes when these things happen to me, I need to canalize it through writing. And I wrote the script and then I actually got myself a flat in, in Marzahn, which I consider to be a difficult area for uh, trans people. And I, with the intention of shooting it there, um, because I thought it's a good setting for it, which in the end, like the people there was really, were really nice. I never had a problem there, but I um, shot it there. And I, um, then I came across this um, genuine, uh, genuine was shot as part of uh, a film festival, a 48 hour film festival of a film school that is called Film Aachen, Film Aachen in, in Berlin. This is a, a underground, uh, film school um, for people that don't have a lot of money basically like it's very cheap and they have we're doing this 48 hour festival where you are supposed to shoot a movie in 48 hours so um I thought this could fit into their great because we can just rehearse for 36 hours and then actually just shoot it in like some hours and then edit it in no time because it's a one shot and that that was the intention wow. from the start so I locked myself up into this one room apartment with all the crew. I made them all sleep there <laughs> and we just like rehearsed for 36 hours. Then we shot it and then we published it there at the film festival at the 48 hour film festival, like 48 hours after making the plan basically. <laughs> but I arrived there with a, with a concept and with a script. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So yeah. Which, by the way, interestingly enough, Brian Wiese, the actor, um, which was in Transmere and in um, and in Genuine uh, and in, in MT Dating, Marlon, he um, he was also part of the film Ache at this point, so he was actually studying there. He was also participating at the same festival, but he wasn't part of Genuine at this point. Mm. Just like little fun fact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So the um, Berlin underground co uh, film community, it's very like, uh, it's a net, like there, it's very connect interconnected. Like you yes. get to see the same people everywhere <laughs> if you're part of it. And um, what was the most technically complex scene for you to shoot and why? Well, technically I have to say it's this one, the one shot. But um, maybe um, actually to be honest, um, Technically, um, even more challenging was the one shot that was the end of T-Stories. 
where um, Alia and me were having the conversation or uh, Vanessa and Jeanette were having the conversation because it was, um, there was a lot more uh, planning to it and there was a bigger crew and it was really more professional. We had more equipment. It was really, really professional. We had actually um, David Schuster doing camera for us and he's a guy that actually worked on Avengers Endgame. <laughs> And we had like um, Alex Feldman uh, doing sound, who is a highly, highly professional guy who I appreciate a lot. Like he's actually Israeli also. Um, so it was really, really professional. We had more actors, more, we, had, um, we did more set design. And so I would even say um, this one. And then also like, um, for example, the scene in the club it's just uh, the second club scene, the one in Transmare. It, we shot it in a, in a real club during a real party because Alia was just um, DJing at this party and she asked if it, it, if it would be okay if I filmed there afterwards. And we got the okay from the organizers. So um, I was just trying to go for shots in this real Berlin underground party and use diagetic sound and everything. So this was also kind of challenging. And I was always there with like the camera in my hand <laughs> Mm -hmm. amongst all of these people in Berlin and you know Berlin parties I don't know if you know but they can get a little crazy sometimes <laughs> I know, I <laughs> and I know. was there with all the gear like trying to like um yeah <laughs> to get it done <laughs> yes yeah, so um, nice it's it's uh, actually um, another thing that comes to my mind and it's the first scene we ever shot for the movie and it was like uh, the one in tea stories and it was very very cold and with the fire in front of us and all the drummers in the background um this is the biggest crew i ever had on a set actually maybe i think i don't know um except like the extras basically basically in the party maybe um which for the first party i also organized a real party basically but i, I organized it and we were also making pauses to the party and breaking the music down and telling everybody like okay now we've set up a new shot and whatever you know um so but due to the coldness maybe this also had been really challenging actually for the actors also and for the drummers and everybody there you know because we shot long 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 like basically the whole night and that was also challenging because it was all outdoors in the middle of winter, which the whole wow. movie is like a winter movie. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the scene in, in the, um, after the party when she's going out and it's so freezing. <laughs> really, and, <laughs> yeah. and you're freezing when you're watching it, you know? That was actually, that was the last snow that we ever had in Berlin so far. After this, it never snowed again. And that was maybe really challenging for Aaliyah. That might be, might have been the most challenging scene for Aaliyah. And yeah, um, that was really, really freezing at this point. And I just like the kind of like, um, uh, I just like this uh, little scene where she actually um, takes cocaine, is surrounded by snow. So she's taking snow in the snow, basically, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that was challenging too. <laughs> we were both really freezing after this. <laughs> Oh yeah. my God. Um, what was the most emotional? There is a lot of emotional scene in the movie. I think every scene is emo very emotional. <laughs> so what was for you um, the most emotional uh, draining scene to shoot? Probably, and I'm not 100% sure, but probably the, um, I call it rape scene in the car. Um, because um, that was like, um, well, it was also kind of personal to me to some degree, but also it's a very um, real thing that like trans people have to deal with when they date with somebody, the shame that comes with um, being associated with dating a trans woman. Um, and I wrote this monologue um, for Brian um, and he did a great job on it, um, but like, um, it's like very tough because it's something that still keeps on happening, you know, like people that are ashamed to be seen with a trans woman in some way. And then also the, the just raw nature of, of this disgusting, like, uh, sex scene there, like, which I tried to make somehow as digestible as possible through using some sort of really, really dark humor, which I don't know if people actually, um, 
see it as humor, but like for me, it, I was trying to make it at least a little bit funny. And through using a cucumber, I was also trying to de-intensify it a little bit, you know, but um, that was that was probably the one. <laughs> it's just really hard. <laughs> for me, at least. I don't know, yeah. like Alia and Brian, for them probably too. <laughs> yeah. Um... And we were just the three of us. At this point, I just was recording sound myself, doing lights myself and everything. Wow. And, yeah, and driving the car myself and all those things, you know. <laughs> As I said, you are a one, uh, one woman uh, crew, so <laughs> <laughs> kind of. you're doing everything in the movie. And I think this is, um, you know, I'm, I had a question, how many people were on the team? Because I think you had a lot of people in very different uh, scenes and yeah. very st different stories. And few times you've been alone, you know, with the actors, so. Yeah, yeah. For example, the scene in the snow outside with Aliyah, I was uh, the only, like, in terms of crew, um, there were a couple of scenes where I was the only crew. So there was like the snow scene outside with Aliyah, all the, um, all the uh, outdoor Aliyah alone scenes, um, the car scene, the club scene, um, um, some parts of genuine uh, of trans mergers. I think that's it. No, the hospital scene. I was doing everything. And interesting for this one is that uh, I was doing camera and acting at the same time, which is a weird combination, I guess. So I just had the picture up, and I kind of looked at the marks and everything where I have to like sit, and then I, and obviously it affects acting negatively if that is happening because I was even doing sound myself. So I have to focus on a lot of things. Um, and uh, for future projects, I would really like to avoid this kind of situations where I actually, um, where it makes me maybe not give 100% in terms of acting, which is something that I also really, really am passionate about, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. So you need to find a very good friend that are DPs. I'm in the process of that, actually. Yeah. Um, but I studied the camera and I, I kind of I always had this dream that I would just uh, find someone who is really, really motivated and has the same kind of like passions as me and like uh, basically ambitions as me to like, um, yeah, and to teach them everything I know about the camera and have them be a good partner in this sense. Yeah. I think one of the most important thing when you are doing a guerrilla movie to have a good uh, friends that will uh, support you and during all the shooting, you know. So. Yeah, and a producer actually would be nice, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm working on that. Actually, I'm working on another project right now. And these are two things that I have from the beginning now. And I hope they stay with the project. But it's like, at least like from the beginning now, I have a DOP that will stay. And I have a producer that will stay and this will be the core team now and nice. this is something I just learned like um, through doing this kinds of yeah of ex experimentation or like hardcore one woman shows yeah <laughs> yeah 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 it's hard to do one woman show when you're shooting such a big movie you know so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I want to make them bigger every time, you know, like I'm, I'm kind of done now at this point to um, make people empathize because um, I feel to a certain degree I'm also fed up with it myself, you know, um, I feel like I'm over this point where I'm trying to make people who are hateful empathize. At this point, I just um, kind of want to uh, do some Tarantino-esque thing where I would like actually just uh, have the trans woman, for example, not always be the victims, but like in like in Django or in Inglourious Basterds, just like turn the turn the page around and just like have fun, you know, and be it be entertaining. Maybe have a heroine which is trans and people can look up to, you know. Like I am, I'm, I'm very much ready to stop the drama, you know. <laughs> in this way, you know, never stop the drama because drama is a good material for movies. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but, uh, um, but uh, also like new yeah. change, new direction. Yeah, yeah basically, I, I, 
I mean, to be honest, my biggest inspiration has always been Quentin Tarantino, which, by the way, he lives in, in Israel right now, I heard. <laughs> so, yeah. but, but anyway. You can um, find him in the streets of Tel Aviv from time to time. Oh, have you ever seen him in, in the streets of Tel Aviv? Not me, but the paparazzi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the paparazzi, my is, uh, <laughs> every time he's sitting it's somewhere, they take pictures. That's oh, for sure, I, I would imagine. Like, yeah, one day I'm gonna just uh, get a little shot of my foot inside a movie and it's just gonna be a little hint. <laughs> yeah, it's him and Gal Gadot. Yeah, I, I also yeah. heard and I also really, really love her, you know, Gal Gadot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really powerful Israeli woman, like many others <laughs> that I've met. Yeah, there. We, there is a lot of strong women in Israel. There are, yes. <laughs> and it's really nice. You know it already. <laughs> 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 yeah. um, I believe that queer cinema must be kicking asses. It's my belief that a good queer cinema should kick ass and will have a, a strong statement. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you think real queer cinema is a guerrilla cinema? A, a thriller? A guerrilla gor 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 cinema. Yeah, yeah. Gorilla, oh, uh, um, yeah. I don't think it has to be. Um, I guess it often is, to be honest, and it also often has been, but I would very much like to bring it into the mainstream somehow, you know? I mean, even with this movie, even though it was highly guerrilla, I was trying to make it as accessible to everybody as possible. So I didn't want only to, for, 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 for queer folks, which it's mainly for them, but I wanted also for everybody else to be able to understand and to for it to for it to be accessible to them, you know. Um, at some point, people will have to get over certain things, I, I believe, and I can't be explaining and educating forever through cinema. You know, it has to be at some point also. Um, I have to get to the point where I don't have to explain to people in a movie anymore what a trans woman is, just because there's a trans character, you know. That we have to get to this point where we can just have a trans character and not focus on trans topics, you know? Um, yeah. And I think I'm ready for this. And I think also people should be ready for this. There's Google nowadays. And if people nowadays ask me, like, uh, ask me certain questions about what it is like to be trans and all of this, I'm like, sometimes I'm, I'm just like, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm tired of talking about, I'm tired of educating there's google nowadays i've done it in movies maybe you can just like look it up you know it's 2020 but after after all i don't think you're you made a movie that educate you made a movie that telling a story telling feelings yeah um if it was an educational movie it will not be in my film festival oh so, thank you <laughs> so because i don't think that you know there there is the genre of educational movies <laughs> that, um, you know, people making, um, you know, because they think they need to educate, you know, what mm -hmm. is gay, what is lesbian, uh, you know, what is trans, you know, but they don't think that this is your movies. Yeah. I think your movies just telling strong stories that uh, if people are smart or watching them, you know, I guess, Trans people will uh, understand they're watching their own life over there, <laughs> and uh, uh, open-minded people will uh, will understand there is there is a story and characters. Um, but maybe I doubt that people they don't care about LGBT or trans people coming into the website and watching and learning. You know, so I mean to be honest, I would like it if Marvel, for example, which is such a huge mainstream, had a trans superhero. So that people just couldn't help but like watch her and have her there as part of like pop culture, you know. So but, that uh, Warner do, doing it uh, in Supergirl in the in in the yeah in the TV I show heard. they have a trans lead character. That's amazing, to be honest. That's exactly where where we need to go. I think I, I think haven't watched what, Supergirl I, to be totally honest, but yeah. I <laughs> think this is much more progressive than Marvel. You know, Marvel is co controlled yeah. by uh, Disney, and Disney is still very conservative. It's like you know? it's like the golden era of, of Hollywood, to be honest. And it's quite interesting, to be honest, as well, because um, 
after, um, I mean, in the golden era of Hollywood, there have been great movies produced, but there were certain issues also with the golden era of Hollywood um, of like, for example, like people were not allowed to do a lot of stuff, you know, and also actors were very controlled. But what happened afterwards, afterwards was a very interesting thing, which I'm very inflated by or very intrigued by. And it's like the new wave, uh, the new age of Hollywood with like Jack Nicholson going crazy on the screen and whatever, you know. And um, if now we're having this huge um, Marvel, which I don't say I, I hate Marvel, whatever, you know, I'm, I'm a big consumer of this kind of movies myself, you know, but um, I think there might be some parallels and maybe, maybe we have a new wave also now of, um, of very free <laughs> and, and no, we would be very patient and see if they if disney will allow them or if they even interested i mean they're trying them. somehow right with captain marvel which is supposed to be so woke and whatever you know yeah. um it's, but yeah, she, so yeah she made the short cutter so it's not make her lesbian you know so <laughs> it's not it's <laughs> it's, still, it's still Disney, but you can see, like in Star Wars, that now belong to Disney, uh -huh. uh, they had a, a lesbian kiss in the end of the last episode, like for one second. In Mandalorian? No, no, in the Star Wars movie. Oh, did they? Yeah, <laughs> like for for they see in the end when uh, when they're coming back to the planet. Oh, and I think I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, they have like but... half a second a lesbian kiss. Uh, uh, but you're watching what's going on in Star Trek, mm -hmm. and oh, yeah. over there they have like all over. It's a party, you know. They have <laughs> trans, non-binary, gay, lesbians, you know. And Star Trek has always done it. Like there was the first interracial kiss, anyways, right? Uh, Long time ago in Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. many. But anyways, um, but uh, um, it yeah. will take a lot of time because Disney is so conservative, and now they own Marvel, they own Star Wars, so it will take them many years, you know. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah, Warner is doing very well, you know. Uh, Warner with DC, with with like, their I TV love shows. I love Birds of Prey so much. I watched it like, uh, this is my new record of the movie I watched most times in cinema because I watched it like 10 times in the cinema. Which, the which cinema. movie? <laughs> Birds of Prey with Harley Quinn. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's a fun movie. So amazing. And, yes, and, and yeah. uh, Christine Hodgson, like a female writer, the director. It was such an amazing movie with such a feminine voice, but still fucking badass, you know? Like that's that's how it needs to be. And like really good action scenes, I must say, and the fun scene. humor. Oh my god! One of the best action movies and best action scenes I've ever seen. That's highly. I fired. think it was the last action movie in the cinema. So. Yeah, I'm so happy I, I got to see it ten times in the cinema before this whole thing went down. You know. Yeah. But um, yeah, this is where we need to go. I think like to make real badass, strong female characters. You know, she says at some point in the trailers. Uh, I'm the one they should be afraid of because I'm Harley freaking Quinn and I'm like yes <laughs> and it should be <laughs> yeah, it, it, I think it was very disappointed that people didn't go and watch it because it didn't become the box office it they wanted it will become mm -hmm. so maybe it was uh, for the wide audience uh, <laughs> to Feminist, uh, feminist, maybe or two. I get so angry when people start when men start cringing at like, hey, um, why is like why is there only a female cast? Whatever you know. Do you ever talk about an all male cast? Like, get it together, you know. Or when somebody attacks a man, suddenly it's like an attack to their masculinity. But when somebody like is rude to a woman, it's not an attack on their femininity or whatever. You yes. know, it's like, come on, guys. <laughs> Just, I know you're, you're, you have some issues, but maybe like, oh. <laughs> it's definitely one of my favorite comics uh, movies Same. Um, uh, in the last few years. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's much better than Suicide Squad. It was um, so boring. Yeah, I, I thought so too. 
yeah. but it's uh, too much studio interaction is what I think happened there. Um, yeah. But yeah, golden age of Hollywood. <laughs> the, the, I think there is no more all, um, golden age of Hollywood. It's just uh, corporations, you know, they're trying to, to yeah, make and in, money and they interfere in the, golden, in the business of in the golden making age of art. Hollywood, yeah, in the golden age of Hollywood, it was at least like a couple of, of studios, uh, but um, Paramount, Universal, like Warner Brothers and uh, Fox and whatever. But now everything is owned by one, you know? We have the biggest studios all owned by one. So maybe it's even more extreme now than um, yeah. the Warner Brothers is the only big major studio standing against it, I guess, and Universal maybe. But um, yeah, I mean, it's a very interesting thing. Let's see how it progresses. I'm very intrigued, you know? I'm very yeah, intrigued. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's see, let's see. <laughs> and, um... But I see you also have like a little Thanos figure over there and like you have like the Avengers over there also in the back, like the fruit and whatever. I have a lot, like yeah. I have uh, more than uh, 70. Um, wow. <laughs> characters over there. <laughs> That's so nice. <laughs> yeah. So maybe I will take the camera. Oh yeah. So also I have like... here, um, Guillermo del Toro and these creatures. I love Guillermo del Toro's creatures. He should have done Star Wars. Like he's so creative. Um, <laughs> Hellboy and Pan yeah. Labyrinth and well, the, um, the new Hellboy. Have you seen the new Hellboy? It was so it's, so trashy, but I loved it. It, it was so, so bad. I, I kind of like it because it's they so didn't. It's did It's not the you know the producer ruined the movie. They didn't <laughs> let the filmmaker to do what he wanted to do. And <laughs> over here I have ladies. You see uh, Laura Plummer over there from uh -huh. Twin Peaks and Vampira oh. and um, Kari and nice. Betty Boop and um, over here we have the Golden Girls and Ocus Pocus. Oh, it's... <laughs> so funny. I have, have a lot of them. You're All a huge fan by yourself. Serial killers from the movies, you yeah. know, Freddy <laughs> and Hitchcock and and so I Mike think that Myers what... and all this uh, Jason Ver Verheis and uh, yeah, I think that's what... I'm I I'm think... big fan. I'm big. Uh, I'm yeah. big, and I love to collect them. Amazing. And I all the time I'm trying to find film... interesting, you know, uh, stuff to add to I my think, collection. Yeah. I think that's what filmmakers should go for to like be a consumer of all sort of art. You know, not to like limit yourself to independent or whatever you know, um, or to only one genre or things like this, you know, like my biggest inspiration Tarantino, he was just literally watching, consuming every kind of movie there is. And I actually do the same, you know, so it's, it's amazing when you meet other fan, fan people like fanboys, fangirls, whatever, and you can just like talk about movies, movies, movies for like forever. <laughs> yeah. You know, people, because I'm doing the festival, the LGBT film festival in Israel, they think that I'm only into LGBT movies. Yeah. They don't, <laughs> they don't really know what is my taste, you know? Yeah. And so. people get surprised when I, for example, tell them I really like um, spaghetti westerns because they're kind of macho. They are, but I still really enjoy them, whatever, you know? I don't, yeah, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> um, so... I'm a feminist anyways, you know? I'm a feminist, but... Maybe I'm a different kind of feminist. Maybe I'm a bad feminist. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I think, um, there is a one, uh, yeah. one question that I want to ask. Yeah. Um, that I, I didn't ask yet. And because you answer to, you know, to other questions in, you know, in, oh, yeah. in a way, so. Um, do you think it's more difficult for you to get budget because you're a trans woman? Yes, I yeah. really think so. I have I've made the experience actually. Um, and I'm young. I'm, I'm not only like a trans woman and a woman, I'm also young. Like that's the third one. And I uh, have studied film, but um, I come from an uh, independ independent, like I, I, I come from a uh, uh, no budget scene and whatever and an independent scene and i have actually made the um i have I, I was working with a man once he was like um 35 but looked a little older and um and uh i just stood behind him and let him be the voice of the movie basically and the 
you know, you know, and it was so much easier, like to get people to jump on board with me, you know, it's incredible, like, maybe it's a good idea to like actually get a old white man with white hair and just as like a shield in front of me and to say um <laughs> and to later be like uh how do you call it a pseudonym to to be a pseudonym and just take him instead you know because it is true it is fucking it's true and it's um annoying to be honest um but it's true yeah <laughs> and i would like I have so many ideas. I have uh, a couple of uh, feature movie scripts written and I have tried, even for this movie, I applied it to um, Transmare. I, app I applied it to ZDF, to ARD, which are um, uh, to Magnus Hirschfeld, which is a foundation which is supposed to be uh, working, for, uh, giving foundations for trans, for, for trans topics to a lot of different LGBT kind of foundations. And I made a really, really professional pitch, to be honest. And uh, many of them didn't even answer. Many of them just turned me down. All of them turned me down. Um, I have done a crowdfunding campaign for uh, uh, Transmare. I used my face um, to be the face of the crowdfunding campaign. It doesn't work, you know? So uh, in the end, I always end up shooting um, my projects no, no budget, basically. And I can't pay my actors, which I really would love to do. You know, they deserve a payment. Um, and I guess me, I also kind of deserve a payment for all the work, you know, but I don't get one. Uh, but in the end, you know, I, I made peace with the fact it's like resistance equals persistence. You know, I will just keep on making movies, whatever the fuck, um, if I have money or not, it's not my motivation, you know. I'm not doing this to get rich. I'm doing it because I can't help it, but to do it, you know, I, I'm an, I, I really have to. Um, yeah, it's my ultimate drive. So uh, yeah, new idea. Maybe I just, um, I get an old white man. <laughs> and I'm the pseudonym. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, if this is the way. If this is the way. <laughs> yeah. But this too shall pass. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, so, what is your next project? My next project is called Lana Hater Hunter. I, I've been writing it. Um, I'm, uh, I have a like uh, 120 move, um, page script. And I'm so. Um, I'm so obsessed by this project. It's like, um, <laughs> it's an action movie actually and kind of exploitation at, at the same time. And it's about um, a world where um, there's a demon which uh, possesses people to be hateful, like to be like transphobes, to be racist, to be homophobes, to be misogynist and whatever. And this demon um, basically possesses them and makes them be like this, you know? And Lana, the protagonist, She's a very fucked up and anti-hero who is uh, curing them by like curing their hearts. Um, I don't know if I should say how she does it. Um, maybe it's too much information, but it's very like uh, bloody sometimes. Also this um, project that I'm working on. And um, so I, um, I really like want to take a different approach to this whole topic, you know, like a more fun one basically, you know? And uh, <laughs> yeah, this is um, something I'm working on. I have 120 pages for a whole feature movie already. And I already have the whole second feature movie lined up and I'm so obsessed by it. I can't stop thinking about it and writing on it. You know, it's been a really fun process. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a really good outlet of all my like uh, anger, for example, sometimes that I have like to just put it into a script and like somebody is on the street asking her are you a man or a woman and she just like oh you need to be cured <laughs> and then she cures them and they're like uh nice again you know and they're like oh i'm so sorry for being a dick or whatever it's not literally in this way but like kind of you know <laughs> so it's really absurd to be honest and just also some sort of comedy and like um yeah <laughs> nice i'm so happy that we had this talk me too. And I want to thank you very much for being part of the festival. I want you. I want to thank you so much for including me. I'm so uh, proud to be part of it. It's my favorite festival, literally. Thank you. And thank I hope you very much for all the support. And um, uh, I hope it will open doors to other film festivals. I don't know. I, I guess like my movie has already been in a couple, and actually won semi finalists in the Universal Film Festival in America. So it was uh, one of the third best movies, um, which is amazing. But like, sadly, it was all during Corona. So like Corona kind of took the whole thing away from me, basically, and the whole momentum. 
and I don't even know what to do with all this information. Like, okay, I've been semi-finalist. Now what? You know, do I get anything? I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. You know. They didn't write you or send you something. Not really, not really. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, but I have the laurels, you know, and I put them on my poster, so it's cool. I have like I don't know a couple of laurels by now. I guess eight or something or nine. And I think by this point, I'm really ready to just, um, I think this is this is the last major festival and this is the one I was hoping for the most. I was praying this movie gets into the Tel Aviv Fest because it's like the most special to me, to be honest. And it's my, I mean it, it's my favorite festival. And I've Thank been you. part Thank of it. Thank you so much. And it's such an amazing selection you guys do. It's just beautiful. And I'm so proud to be part of it. But anyways, um, I think like by now I, I'm ready to just produce a DVD and just sell it, you know? Um, I'm through with this festival. If there, if it gets to more festival, amazing, you know. But um, I'm kind of, yeah. Maybe no DVD, but like um, uh, companies that are doing online service for queer, because DVD, it's nobody buying, darling. <laughs> I don't know, you know. I, I'm not no the one. best. At this. I'm not, I'm not a, a producer, to be honest. I try to be sometimes, and I have to be sometimes, but I'm. It's not my fault, like my my strong. The there is a few uh, online uh, services that you can make money over there with your movie it would be amazing actually like maybe um, if, and you, you will just need to promote it you know and i would love to i mean maybe after um after um privately we you can give me some information or, or some some tips yeah, yeah. i would really appreciate Let, that. let's let's talk about it next week uh, privately okay yes Thank you because, so much. Because I need to prepare to my next Zoom meeting. So yeah, thank, th you. thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Same. To so, thank you, danke schön, gracias. <laughs> De nada. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I hope uh, say, let's talk next week. And um, on uh, on that, and um, okay, so I wish you all the best. Me too. Me too. Thank you. And I hope we see each other soon again. When yeah, we we over. will we should do the Zoom privately next week. On, yeah, uh, sure, definitely. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.